I think there's been plenty of highlights over the last 10 years, um, not just obviously the sporting side of things. Um, I've had the, the birth of my daughter. Um, I've seen my life obviously change since and evolve, should we say, since since rehab, since recovery, since just getting on with my life and do, making the most of it. I think that rugby's played a massive part of it. Um, I think even the very start since I started playing wheelchair rugby for me, the goal was to try and get to at least one Paralympic Games and uh, I think once that was in sight, I think the goal post then moved to try and at least win a medal and obviously we did that pretty well in Tokyo. Uh, but I think yeah, to continue doing that would be a, a great progression for the next 10 years. Think you're going to win another gold? Yeah. Definitely. I think if you haven't got that mindset, um, there's no point playing, playing uh, at this level. Um, I think everybody plays for different reasons, but for, for myself and the rest of the squad, we've always got to strive for that gold. You're a GB Paralympic gold medalist and you're a member of the British Empire now. How do you get up in the morning now? I mean, that's a lot to achieve in anyone's lifetime, never mind 10 years. So what motivates you now? What, what gets you up in the morning? Uh, I, even going back to those uh, before we'd even done all these the, the highlights that we got, I think that that, that probably was my uh, my motivation. But um, I didn't want to be uh, just like a, a flash of the pan or a, like a, a lucky gold medal. Uh, I wanted to continue this this progression and this, um, this this road that we're on. And I think that um, the way that I keep motivating myself is I never see myself as a finished article. Um, there's always room to improve somewhere. I think the longer that you have that drive, the more you can keep continue going forward with yourself as, as, a, as a person, as a, as a sports person, as a, as a human being, and not only that, but what you're playing with everybody as well. But what's success to you? You, you can kind of go away from um, not just winning the medals and this, that and the other, but for me, success could be you get out of bed in the morning and, and you're, feeling, you're feeling happy. Obviously, many people have got a lot of things to be happy about, and just having a life to get up to and life to get on with was um, enough for me. I think that I'm going to go back again to when I first opened my eyes in the hospital when I came out from the coma. For me, uh, I was happy that I was still able to open my eyes, let alone what had happened. So for me, that was success that I was still alive. And now if I can take that little window and that little uh, glimpse ray of hope that and continue using that forward, that hopefully um, if you're going to the gym, you're getting PBs, you're playing sport, you're getting a new fast time, or you're, like I said, anything that can do that's a little goal to you and you achieve it, that could be successful and for me. And physically, are you, are you still getting better? Uh, I think I think eventually there will be some kind of like slowdown or some kind of decline in my progression. Um, I'm hoping that uh, there is still that, that, that positive angle of trajectory. Um, I'd like to still keep improving and obviously the, 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 the day that you don't kind of, you know, have to, you have to know yourself to, um, to take that step backwards and example. But for now, I'm still enjoying sport and still making those progressions. Maybe not always like in a, in a new PB and things like that, but if you're still mastering those one things, that 1% that you're not achieving like yesterday, you're still always getting that way forward. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's good, the, the one percent better every day. It's yeah. a management philosophy. It's a sport philosophy. It does make sense, though, doesn't it? Massively, yeah. I think uh, if you set yourself smaller goals, they're definitely a lot more achievable. Rather than, I know I said originally that I wanted to get to one Paralympic Games, but it's nice to have that big goal in the distance. But to, in order to get there, you have to take them smaller steps to reach yeah. it. So definitely, yeah. What are the next four or five goals in the next ten years? Um, I think, with a, from a rugby perspective, um, we're, we're still kind of gelling as a squad. Um, still got new things to work on. Um, I'd like to continue that progression. Obviously, ever since I've came into the squad, there's been a, a great upward trajectory of, of where we're going and where we're heading. Um, I like the, the path that we're on at the moment and what we're going to get to. So, um, if that continues, if that evolves, um, not just again, like I said, in rugby, but in life as well. Um, I have things that I need to get on with life and uh, away from rugby. It can only be a, a positive thing and fingers crossed that we'll, uh, we'll keep pushing forward. Yeah. And do your family embrace the, the, the wheelchair rugby lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the kids are now kind of getting used to it and I'm obviously away quite a lot. Um, but I'm trying to involve them as much as possible. Uh, my son sometimes comes up and takes part in some of the training sessions and he's only started loving it despite me telling, he him telling me how, uh, how, how tiring it is. Uh, and my daughter started coming now as well, so she, she enjoys it and she probably enjoys chatting to more people while it allows me to play this sport. So yeah, they enjoy the, uh, the environment. But are you going to coach at some point? Um, it's not really on my agenda. Um, I want to, even though I started playing the sport quite late in my terms of my, my life rather than starting at an early age, um, I still like to continue to play for as long as possible and for as long as my body holds out. Whether or not, as soon as my body gives up and we're not reaching those 1% those, those goals increases every day, that, that my new 
path kind of takes me towards coaching. Uh, I think I'll leave it later towards the line and, and see where we go from there, but you know. How are the preparations going and can you give us an insight into um, how you're going to be different come Euros? So yeah, we're, uh, we're working on quite a lot of things. Um, even, I'd say, uh, even after Tokyo, we, we, we weren't the finished article. We've had obviously a few um, guys retire and guys finish their careers playing virtual rugby. So we've had these new guys come in. It's about getting them up to speed and getting them into used to our, our ethos and the way that we work. And it's also about uh, us adapting to them as players and getting the most out of them. So I think as, as the full TV virtual rugby squad, uh, we, are, we are positive, we are, um, confident in our ability and um, fingers crossed when we're going forward we can continue the way that we're playing and, and implementing these new things that we're, we're training towards and hopefully it'll pay the rewards down in Cardiff. And Adam's coming as new assistant coach, what, what's he brought to the squad? Um, Adam is uh, quite a, a, a different approach from what we were used to. Um, I'm, I'm quite lucky in the sense that uh, I also play for a club team uh, in the US which is also coached by Adam so I've got quite a good insight into the way he works. Um, but yeah, it's been um, a, a pretty good way that uh, he, he kind of gets into the guys. He's got that connection. He's got that, uh, that that style of coaching, which is pretty easy. But we've also got that, that authority background. So uh, even it goes to show now that no, no matter who you are within the squad, no matter which gold medal, how many MBs you've got, if you're doing something wrong, you will get told about it. So we kind of need that. We kind of be kind of need to be held accountable. Uh, but it's good that we also get that that positive reinforcement a lot of time as well. So. Yeah. I noticed in training that the communication levels were like, like I was smiling because I, as a sportsman, if people are communicating with each other, it means that they're confident and they know what they're doing. And the, the levels of noise were amazing. Was that something that Adam's brought in or is it just something that you've all been working on? Uh, it's something we've always had to uh, had in the back of our minds to, to get better at. Um, and again, I don't think we'll, we're ever going to be perfect at it. Um, but it, if we, we can definitely see the progression that it makes when the comms are good, when it's when they're brought up and you can also see when things are going bad how much the comms drop. So um, it's definitely something we need to continue working on and if we if we can do that you know that the, the rewards will pay for themselves. So yeah. And then since some new guys joined the squad, yeah. uh, how are they fitting in? Uh, they're good. Um, obviously we've had like I said a few few people drop out and a few people retire from the sport so um, we've had to reintegrate some 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 newer guys through. Um, it, it's been it's been a bit of a steep learning. Curve. I'm talking from a, a personal perspective from when I first joined the squad that the you you literally you, you try and stay quiet. You try and absorb every single little bit of information you can to make yourself better. And um, for them, I can see sometimes the 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 brains working like overload and trying to take it all in. But I think that um, they're making good impressions. Uh, they've slotted in pretty well and. Uh, fingers crossed that they'll, they'll come and make an impression for, for Denmark and for, uh, for the Euros in a couple of months' time.